What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Is this episode four? I don't know. Episode something of the Dominate <laughs> Podcast. And we're back uh, here with my, my, uh, my brother from another mother, the man, the myth, the legend, shortly yep. known as JFP. Uh, no one calls him that except for Weighing me. Weighing in at 195 pounds. Weighing in at 195. MMA champion. <laughs> I don't know where else to go with this. But anyway, we're... We're excited to be here as he flexes on everybody. And um, today, you know, we don't have much of a topic. We want to talk about some of the books that we've been reading lately mm-hmm. and um, what we think is, is great. Um, and we're going to go from there. So who knows what we'll end up talking about, but I do have a couple important things I want to cover in the book I want to talk about. Do you have a book that you want to talk about? Or? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Got to just go with the flow. I, should, should I go first? Or you you, you should go first. first. Okay, yeah. I should go first. So the book I want to talk about today is a book that everybody should read. And I'm actually very disappointed in my, my partner in crime here <laughs> because I've told this motherfucker to read this goddamn book. <laughs> How many times have I told you to read this book? Like three three or four times. Like 15 fucking times. And, um, but you told me like a week ago, two I, weeks ago. I told you several weeks ago now. And you still have not even, have you not even bought the, you haven't even bought the fucking book. How do you know that? Have you bought the book? Potentially. I'm, I'm asking how you, how you know if I bought the book or not. Because you would have told me, hey man, I bought that book. I, I, yeah, I did. Um, I'll, I'll order it on Amazon tonight. Okay. This motherfucker just tried to live on, <laughs> lie, live on camera. I can't talk. Okay, he looks at me and says, well, how do you know that? I said, did you? <laughs> well, potentially. No, you fucking didn't. Okay, you would have said, yeah, yeah, throw that phone over there. All right. Anyways, um, if you have not read the book Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz, I believe is the author's name. Um, you're, you're fucking up in life. Okay? <laughs> you are fucking up in life. It is by far the best self-development book I've ever read. Um, it's better than Thinking Grow Rich. In fact, Thinking Grow Rich is not even in the same fucking league. Really? Yes. Not even in the same league. Like, we're going from, like, Psycho Cybernetics is like LeBron, okay? Uh, Think and Grow Rich is like some dude on a G League team. Okay? No way. It's that big of a difference. The thing about Think and Grow Rich that I don't like, and look, if you guys are fans of that book, I understand. I think it's a good book. I'm just being honest with you guys. It's way too fucking like fugaziness. Like it's fucking like m- mystical. Okay. Yeah, I not agree. The book is fucking mystical. Okay. You know what Psycho Cybernetics is? Fucking facts. Just like you do this shit, it's gonna fucking work. That's sick. Okay. It's fucking dope. And everything they talk about, it's it's everything's backed up by actual fucking evidence. So is it more of a money making book or just a to d- self development? Development. Okay. Okay. Talks about being disciplined, goal seeking, like. Creating a new identity, like everything. Okay, it's That's basically the Sam Evans 101. Okay, and as again, as much as I love thinking we're rich, it is not in the same league. Okay, it's not even fucking close. So. Well, I was gonna uh, the book I was gonna talk about was thinking we're rich. I mean, you're a fucking pussy. Yeah, okay? well, I'm, I'm, gonna, a, I'm gonna think about another book I've read. Yeah, think yeah, you think about another one. Anyways, um, if you haven't read this book, uh, maybe I should put an affiliate link down below. <laughs> Click the affiliate link now. I'm just kidding. There's no link, but search it up on Amazon. You can get it for like 10, 15 bucks. In fact, last night I took my good friend Malik out. Ha- Malik, if you watch this, happy birthday to you. We went out. Oh no uh, way! To happy Fleming's. birthday, Malik. Yeah, we went out to Fleming's. The boys. Um, had some steak. Saw Michael Francesc was there. Uh, mafia guy, kind of cool. He was okay. there. Literally, like, dude's worth like. Fit. Anyway, uh, <laughs> kind of crazy. Ran into him. Uh, and then we went to Barnes and Noble, and he bought the book right there. I told him you have to you have to buy this fucking book. And he said, oh, I'm buying it tonight. Bought it right there because he's a fucking action taker. Okay, he didn't he didn't wait three weeks to buy the book. Okay, he just bought it. What times? What times Barnes and Noble uh, up until tonight? Let's look. Let's look. Okay, Barnes and Noble hours. I'll go fucking buy right now. Seven. Should be up until like nine or ten, right? Something like that. The Spectrum ones usually open a little later. We do not have fucking internet here apparently. Oh, we'll wait for that to come up. Anyway, yeah, it's um, oh here we go. Uh, nine p.m. Yeah. Uh, with the brother Elisa one. Nine p.m. Uh, what about the uh, Irvine one? Uh, 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, excuse- oh, I can't go to the Irvine ones or the Aliso one or any of these 15 locations that we're about to look at. Some of them being nowhere near us. Yes. Newport Beach, can't make that one, 9 p.m. They're all 9 p.m. Anyway, um, you guys need to buy that book immediately. It is, again, by far the best self development book I've ever read. In fact, I had never read it before until about six months ago. And you know who recommended it to me? Who? Alex motherfucking Becker. Oh, the goat. The goat. No okay? shit he recommended He told it. me. He was like, yo, look, man. He was like, before you come on Mastermind, you got to read two books. I was like, okay. 
From what I knew, he didn't like reading. Okay, I remember watching a, a video of him several years ago. He was like, fuck reading. That's not what you do to be successful. Obviously, things have changed. <laughs> okay. But he, uh, he tells me, he's like, look, man, you need two books. Number one, Psycho Cybernetics. Number two, there's another book I think everyone should read. It. And this is more if you're doing business. Um, but there is a whole section called Life Principles. Uh, and it's called Principles by Ray Dalio. Okay, now Ray Dalio, you know who Ray Dalio is? I don't. Okay, Ray Dalio is a billionaire. Okay. Ray Dalio uh, owns a hedge fund. Now, I don't know very much about hedge funds. I'm assuming you don't. This may be a little bit off, but as far as I know, most hedge funds, if they're very successful, they control about 30 to $40 billion of invested money. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a successful hedge fund. Oh, 100%, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ray Dalio's fund controls $161 billion. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's the number one hedge fund in the world. Nobody knew who he was until he made this book two years ago, three years ago now. Um, it is by far the best, one of the best business principle books I've read other than Made in America by Sam Walton. Um, but it's just an overall fucking great book. Very long, 600 pages, but it's great. I'm trying to think. So I need to get Made in America principles, psycho cybernetics. Yeah. Um, seven, uh, seven habits of highly effective people. Was it? Yeah. Is that I a good mean, one? It's good, but you don't need that right mm-hmm. now. Uh, By the way, I uh, set up my bo- my bookcase. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, no way. So I have one that's very similar to my room. Oh, nice, Matt. I'm stoked on it. Uh, you should get Blue Ocean Strategy. You finished that one? Uh, no, I haven't finished it yet. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Um, you should get... Uh, what else do you need? You need... You should read The Laws of Human Nature. That's a fucking great book. If you want to do a webinar, that's a great book. Because it's all about um, like understanding people. Really? Yeah, and if you want, grab them. Let's take, let's take a look at it real quick right now. On, on oh, the that's camera. the Bible, though. That's like the fucking huge one. Huh? Yeah, it's this huge red one. Have you finished it? No, I finished most of it. But let me see this. Most of it has it. Most of it. I don't know Halfway why this through is. I'm, I'm, apparently, I'm 78 pages in. I don't think that's right. But <laughs> anyways, this book was written by um, Robert Greene. And you see there's all these different chapters here. So the master of your, master of your emotional self, transform self, love, and empathy. And so that's like the first two is kind of about yourself. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the chapters is like seeing through people's masks, like determining the strength of people's character. And it's really cool because the way it's set up is it teaches you, it gives you like a historical example. Mm-hmm. And, then, um, and then it tells you like in real world today, like how you can use this principle to read people and become more persuasive. And that looks sick as fuck. Yeah, it's very good. That's yeah. when you got to take notes on, huh? 100%, yeah. In fact, Patrick Bet David from Value Tainment actually interviewed him about, interviewed the author, Robert Greene, about this book. And when he started the interview, you know what he said? Specifically, I remember this. What? He said, I don't read Robert Greene's books. I study, study them. them. Damn. It's crazy. I got to sneeze now. Holy shit. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you, man. <coughs> anyway. So, yeah, if, you're, if you want to do a webinar, what you're doing, mm-hmm. highly recommend that you... Um, read that book. You read that book. Fuck yeah. Um, so, yeah. Oh, that's cool. what, what, what about you, man? What, what books do you have? Well, I was going to say Think and Grow Rich until you shit on it. Yeah, you're a fucking... Nah, I mean, it's a good book, but... Until you shit on it, like... I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I used to be a big Think and Grow Rich fan. I'm not much of one anymore. Um, just because it's... I don't know. I just think, like, this is, to me... Like, if you look at, like, people are like, oh, you got to have a successful mindset. Like, you do, absolutely. I think a successful mindset is someone who's disciplined. That's a successful mindset to me, okay? And you just apply the discipline to whatever you want. Um, I don't think a successful mindset is sitting and, like, fucking meditating and, like, humming, like, um, and you're fucking, like, like driving a Lamborghini in your thoughts. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's... Yeah, you know, I will say at the end of the day, I don't think that's the first... I don't think you should start off by doing that. Yeah, I no. think you should start off... I think number one thing you should fix is your diet. I think people's diet really fucks them. And it's so funny... Be- I'll tell you a funny story, man. So, um, you know, I coach basketball, and... I, especially last year was the first year I really did it where, um, you know, I juice every day, Mm -hmm. sometimes even two times a day. Um, but I really made it a habit of, I'm going to juice every time I go to practice so that these kids see me juicing. Okay. Okay. Because consciously I'm like, if I get these kids to juice, they're going to have much more focus and much more energy, which really is not going to make, they already have a lot of energy at their age anyway, but it's going to help them in the long run. Mm -hmm. And, uh, apparently it worked because a few of them, you know, told me, oh, I'm going to start juicing. And then a few of them actually brought some juices sometimes. And, and then now you know, I mean, who knows? But now, over the summer, you know, I'm coaching my new team, and it's the end of the summer, and we're doing this beach cleanup, and I'm talking to the sophomore coach. Now, I coach freshmen, so all, a lot, 95%, in fact, I think this year, all of the kids that were on my team last year are now on his team. And he's trying to bulk them up. You know, they're, uh-huh. they're little skinny kids, most of them. I mean, who am I to talk? But, you know. Um, 
I don't think too about that. Did you? Did you, <laughs> did you just flex on camera like that? You know why I'm so proud? Because today I hit 195. No, wait, congratulations on that. Let's go. So I'm five pounds away from that big two, two zero zero. Two zero zero. But I put it on my Snapchat story, and everyone was swapping up, and they're like, oh, like, it's fine. Like, um, I almost get there. I lost 30 pounds or something. You're like, no, bro. No, like, I'm, I'm happy. I'm trying to gain weight. Because yeah, I put 195, and some of my friends are like, fat. And I'm like, dude, I, I, I'm not fat. <laughs> yeah, no. I, don't, I don't think they realize you're like 6'2", and you're, you're muscle for the most part. Yeah. You know? I don't think they get that part. Anyways, but long story short, though, about this basketball thing. So the sophomore coach at the time was like, oh, yeah, man, these fucking kids are so goddamn health conscious. I'm like, that's me, motherfucker. That's <laughs> me, motherfucker. That's uh, funny. But, uh, but, yeah, I just think number one thing with discipline diet. Is, is diet, dude. You got to get your diet right. Because if you're eating fucking Kentucky fried chicken every day, like, you're not going to be able to think. I'm just being honest with you. Like, dude, I know. And I think the hard part about that for most people is that they, they see that diet or they hear that diet, you know, will work for them and make them like their mind sharper and stuff, mm -hmm. but they don't commit to it. They just like, they eat good for one day, then they don't feel any different. And it's like, well, no shit. You know yeah, what I mean? It takes a while. It takes yeah. a while. You know what's crazy about that, man? I'll tell you this story. So this was back like at the end of last summer, uh, business was doing about 10, 20 K a month at the time. And right as I started juicing, we went from 10 to 40. I swear to God, it was like within a month of me starting juicing, I went from 10 to 40. Then, I kid you not, you fast forward, within a month of me going crazy with my diet, where it's just like, I, eat the, I don't know if you guys know, I eat the exact same thing every single day with the occasional Chipotle, and, and you know we went out the other day and the Flemings. But what, what is it you eat again every day? What's your diet? Literally, it's brown rice, black beans. So I, I put three cups of cook, it's three cups of cooked brown rice. And you cook them in shit for yourself? Yeah, I cook it. Um, cook it at home. I have like a rice cooker. Okay. And then a can of black beans. I have two of those a day. And then uh, grilled chicken. I have a whole pack of grilled chicken every single day. Okay. I eat half of lunch, half of dinner. Okay. It comes out that plus the two heels I drink is about 3,800 calories a day. Okay. okay. Anyways, uh, it's the most clean fucking, I got nothing else. It's no bullshit. Okay. Again, once in a while I'll go out. But anyways, as soon as I switched to that diet, we went from 40 to 100. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if it's just coincidence. Or if there's a fucking, like, maybe I just got to go fucking green juice only for a month and I'll make a meal or something. <laughs> I don't know. I think from from the 40 to 100, um, mm -hmm. and this is just my take on it, maybe, it, you know, sharpen your mind a little bit and let, let you get there. But I also think just like what Sam Evans says, like, you know, adding by subtracting, and that probably really helped with that. You know what I mean? I agree. No more brain fatigue, just like boom, 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 you already know what you're doing. So you don't have to worry about your meal. I mean, sometimes I sit there for like a couple minutes and I'm like, what do I want to eat? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I just. And that's I mean, valuable time. Literally never had that problem. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like it's, it's like same thing with like clothes. Like, oh, I'm I'm on that. Yeah, I know you're on that. Yeah. Like it's the same thing. Like uh, you're even more extreme with me than, than me on this one. Like mm -hmm. you were literally the exact same t-shirt. You just have a bunch of black t-shirts. Yeah, I have like for those people listening, I have like literally twenty black t-shirts every single day. Um, wake up, put a black t-shirt on, and it just literally like it takes out like I don't know if it. If I used to really spend that much time thinking about my clothes. Yeah, you're never really that into it. But like at the same time, like it uh, it just helps. I don't know. Cause, and then because everything goes black, so I wear whatever shorts I want and it's fun. I love it. Fucking yeah. love it. And I have done the same thing not to that extreme, but it's just all my company shirts yeah. and all that. I never really wear anything else. In fact the other day, um, yesterday, I uh, I told uh, David, I told I told him like, Hey, you know, I'm going to Fleming's he's like, Oh, you're gonna dress up? I'm like, fuck that, what the hell? I'm going to wear my surplus warrior shirts. Like, oh, don't you need a dress up to go there? I'm like, dude, they, they just want my money, man. Yeah, they, they don't, they don't, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. It's kind of like when we went uh, to that place in Dallas. What was yeah. it called? Perry's. 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 I'm the king. If you guys live in Dallas, you guys need to go to fucking Perry's. That shit is amazing. You didn't get a steak. You're an idiot. That shit is amazing. No offense to you. Shit is amazing. I even offered to literally buy you a steak. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I said I will buy you a steak. You fucking get whatever you want. Oh, that's true. But then I'm like, fuck, dude. I'm not going to let you buy me a steak. I just don't feel like a steak. Anyway, um, the first time, actually, every time I've been to Dallas to Paris, except for this last time, which was not, it was after we went, I've worn basically the same thing. Like, these jeans, black t-shirt, and a fucking single AF hat I have. Yeah. I actually lost that hat. I don't have it anymore. That's, that's a bummer. I know, it's a bummer, but deal closer. So that's all good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I just don't, nobody gives a fuck, dude. Nobody really cares. Yeah. And if some girl is going to be into you because of what you wear, I don't really want to date that girl anyway. Um, now, now. Here's the thing, with that, okay. <clears throat> I don't think they'd be into you, um, based on what you wear or not. Mm -hmm. But I think when you're getting a girl and first impression, 
looking nice and clean and you know I agree like you look nice and clean regardless but I'm yeah. saying like um, a good outfit might attract them just to talk to you and then from there your personality and who you are closes them I, I agree with that I think I think number one so like the outfit could be like the landing page I, I agree well my landing page right now what's my landing page what does it convert at 40%, 40% have you seen it it's pretty fucking so simple. So that means that with the good, with, with optimizing your outfit, yeah. you go out there to a bar or something, and forty percent of chicks, you know, they're into you, and then it's all about you. You know, you're like the you're the webinar, you're the sales. I'm the webinar. I'm closing that. And, and you're, you're you're closing. I'm closing, man. We just went from business to pickup. There's now a pickup podcast. All right. Um, no, man, I, I agree with you. I think obviously, like all the basic shit is important, but I think as far as outfit and clothing go. And so I was having this conversation with, with Malik last night. I was like, dude, like with a car. Like if a girl's going to be into you because of the car that you drive, that's not, that's not good. That's true. That's not good, you know. Um, I will say this, though, guys. Like you, you want to you you know a trick? There's a trick, man. <clears throat> My dad told me this story a long time ago. He's like, he's like listen, he's like, he's like <clears throat> when I was like your age, Spencer, He's like, I remember I went out to a bar and I had this really good friend and he had just bought this brand new top of line Ford Mustang, okay? Like all the upgrades you could have. It was like a, like a $30,000, $40,000 Mustang back then, which is like a lot of money. Right? Uh-huh. And, um, you know, modified it, like everything. It was ridiculous. And I remember he was bragging about his car and all this. And I had like this old SEL I bought or whatever it was, this old Mercedes. You know, it was like a few years old. It wasn't like old, but yeah, a few yeah. years old, you know? Just a regular Mercedes. And I said, look, man, I said... Who do you think, what car do you think is going to be better picking up a chick? Your, your, your Mercedes or, or, or my Mustang? He said, my dad's like, the Mercedes. Yeah. All the way. He's like, no, it's not. This Mustang's way cooler. All right, what? So we went into, they went into a bar and they put the fucking keys down. All right? And the bartender was a chick. Mercedes key, Ford Mustang key. And he's like, which one's nicer? And the fucking Mercedes what? Because <laughs> the secret is this is the only reason why people buy nice cars, other than if they like it, right? It's like, oh, I really want a Lamborghini. Like, that's one thing. Yeah. But here's the thing, man. Name, how many girls know the difference between a C63 and a C43? Not very many. Now, how many girls know the difference between a C300 and a C63? Yeah, yeah. If you put them next to each other, they'd be like, I can kind of see a difference. Yeah, yeah, they're Mercedes. Yeah, it's yeah. a Mercedes, yeah. right? So it doesn't fucking matter, bro. Like, just get a nice car. I think for me, just, you know, you, it, it, and again, this is not me giving dating advice, but, like, if you want to have a fulfilled relationship, I think you should be fulfilled yourself. I think too many people are age, especially go on, like, chase all the time. Chase girls. Oh, okay. Instead of trying to figure out who the fuck they need to be to to set a strong foundation. You know what I mean? I'd agree with that, yeah. I don't know. That's just my opinion. What do you think, man? Dating guru Spencer. No, I'm definitely not a dating guru. That's, that's not true. What, what do I think as, re, as regards to... To whatever. <laughs> I, I, I just don't, I'm not 100% clear. Um, is this, is this gonna, are we going to continue this, this dating? No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just passing the mic to you, man. Whatever you want to bring up. Now's the time. This Now's the time. Let's see. Confessions. Um, Confessions. Confessions with Jack that now. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I was gonna, I was about to not say this. And I just thought of this because of what I did last night. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but I don't give a fuck. Um, so I'm gonna say it. So last night, right? Because uh, for those of you who don't know, um, we've been waiting for Google to spend money for me, mm-hmm. uh, for my my webinar, right? Yep. Um, so I've kind of had a few days where I haven't been working as hard, right? Yeah. Um, today I kind of got back into it. Tomorrow I'm gonna get back into it. But yesterday. Um, we went to an angel game, okay? I don't know. That's cool. It was fun. Uh, a few, me and my guy friends. And uh, we got fucking hammered. Really? Yeah. Okay. At the angel game. Well, that's dope. So, I'm not going to lie. It was like one of the funnest nights of my life. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, today, I feel like I want to die. Yeah, that's, and, that's what happened. And it's kind of like, you know, Becker, he had that huge post. He's like, fuck alcohol. Like, you know, that's when you feel like shit. And like, literally like, today I could have gotten so much more shit done. Even right now, I'm yawning and it's what, seven yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just like it. It's just kind of an interesting topic to bring up, like, because um, I I felt very fulfilled in that moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you brought fulfillment. Um, all my guy friends, you know, were tipsy, having a good time. And then the next day today, I'm just like, felt I feel so unproductive. I feel um, unfulfilled, right? 
and I just feel like I, I don't know, I feel like a piece of shit today. So it's kind of an interesting thing to talk about, um, like short term versus long term. How, how often do you drink, man? I'd say twice a week. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Well, I mean, you're doing it. it I, I think it just, you know, if I work really hard, like, all day, mm-hmm. and all my friends are hanging out and they're drinking, mm-hmm. like, I feel like, I, in a way, I earned it to just go out and have fun. Fair enough. Because most days, I don't feel like this afterwards. Right. Yeah, because I'll drink a few beers, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, social drinking, you know, have fun. Next day, I'm back at it. But, like, how often do I get hammered, hammered? Yeah, yeah. Um, not very often. It's interesting, man. It's interesting. Yeah, I think, like, my whole stance on drink, obviously, you know, I don't drink. Um, if you don't, on the podcast, you didn't know I don't drink. I actually never drink. It's just crazy. Uh, but my, my, my whole stance is, like, look, man, at the end of the day, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why I, I ask you that question is because, you know, I'm obviously I'm a good friend of yours. I know what you're capable of. I think you're going to get to a point in the very near future where you're going to have to make a choice. Yeah. If you want to continue progressing, you got to cut it. And if you're happy with where you're at, then you're happy with where you're at. That's true. I mean, it's one of those things where I think, like, um, especially when I'm, like, you know, really locked in on this. Like, it's not going to be often, but, like, you know. I, like, well, it's hard. I mean, you're, you're when you're up at UCSB. Or yeah, something, like, I, it's like I'm... Like, I, I don't do any drugs. I don't do any of that stuff. Like, mm-hmm. the only thing I sometimes do to, like, you know, I guess let loose, whatever it is, is drink. Um, and I'll probably continue doing that, to be 100% honest. But I can definitely control it. Definitely, yeah. yeah. No, like I said, I, it's, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not, you're not an alcoholic. I know that. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not no assuming idea. you are at all. But I'm just saying, like, you're going to come to a point in this game. Where if you want to get to the next level. Where if you want to compete at a higher level, you're going to have to sacrifice it. Mm-hmm. And it's going to happen very soon. Mm-hmm. You know, Sam Levin says, literally, it's a quote, the most profitable thing I ever did was stop drinking alcohol. Really? That's a, that's a direct quote from Sam Levin. That's nuts. So, you know, but I mean, like, at, the, at the end of the day, dude, like, you're young. You know, he's, you're 21. You're in college. How old Sam's 29? Uh, I think he's 30 now. 30. I don't know. But he's right around there. But, uh, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're a young man. You're yeah. a good-looking guy. You want to have fun. You know, drink. Like, it's cool. I get it. Um, but... You know, eventually, not now, but you're going to have to make a choice of, do I want to continue competing or am I happy with where I'm at? And do I want to get that? And either way, it's cool. Yeah, exactly. You know, but um, just warning you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come from the time. And you've got to make the decision. You can't have your friends be like, oh, man, you're already making all this money. Because like, you're going to be making money. At yeah, point. yeah. It's like, oh, like, fuck all that. It's like, no, you got to be like, what do I really want? What, what? am I going to look back on six years from now and say, I'm glad that I kept drinking every weekend or I'm glad, or, you know, whatever. Or I'm glad that, you know what, I cut it out for a couple of years and just really focused and made something special. Yeah, yeah 100%. Not and that's kind of one of those things, like, you, you brought it up, like, oh, like, you're making a lot of money. And, like, if I get to the point where I want to get you, which is 30 k a month on the Webby, mm-hmm. um, I'd be really excited, right? But, like, you know, and I think for, like, the first couple months, I'd be like, this is surreal, you know what I mean? Like, I'm actually making good money for myself. <clears throat> but... Um, I think even though like that's livable money or like you know money that you can live off of, and especially with my situation, I think like my competitive nature is just gonna want to bring it up to the next level. You know what I mean? Right. It might. You know, or you might get comfortable. You might that's, say, tr- I, that's true. Actually. Right, or you might say, you know what, man? Hey, I'm young. You know, I'm, I'm living the college life already. I got a great life here. I'm studying, and you know, honestly, because in some ways we're indirect competitors, right? I mean, even though I helped you <laughs> launch the whole thing, like you're teaching people how to make money, like I'm teaching people how to make money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so at some level, we're direct competitors. Plus, you got all your direct competitors. You got people like Dan Henry directly competing with you in social media marketing. A little bit different, but same general audience. Um, you know, and then you got a ton of different people trying to make money. And it's like, if you want to get past 50, 100 a month, you want to get to 500 a month, you have to be all it. Yeah. You know, you have to get to a point where you sacrifice everything. Like, I made this rant yesterday for IGTV. I haven't uploaded. I don't know if I will. Where I, like, I just go off on my competitors. Like, the name of the video is gonna be like, "Fucking, it's time to die." Dot dot dot. Message to my competitors. Like, that's what the video is gonna be. That's so funny. And it's just me going off on these motherfuckers because that's actually, such a you thing to do. It is because they actually think they're gonna fucking like have a chance. Like they're already they're they're already homeless. They don't understand. Like I'm not stopping until they're they're done. Right, and if someone's competing with me, and they're drinking every Saturday, dude, they're so fucked. 
You have no idea. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm not saying I'm competing against you, but there's yeah. going to be someone eventually that is like me that's going to do that. No, I feel that. I understand that. And maybe maybe that'll be you. I guess it comes down to the point where it's like, I don't know yet. If I, because you're, you're trying to, you know, what's your goal in the next two years, a month? Like in two years from now, how much do you want to be doing? I want to be doing a mill. A mill month. Yeah. Um, which is sick as fuck, right? Yeah. I just don't know if like right now my goal is going to be like, you know, because I'd be fucking beyond happy with anything over 50. You know what I mean? Um, I, I just don't know if, if I'm going to be like, okay, this works for me. You know, I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like 90% in, but still 10%. I can do other shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, or if I'm going to want to go to the next level and just drop everything, just fucking go all in. I guess I'll figure that out when we get there. Yeah, I think it's actually because, you know, I've always been super competitive. And then I remember the first month we hit 100. I was very excited about it. I was working very hard. And then the month after that, April, um, I don't want to say I took a break, but, you know, we, we went to Dallas that month, so there was a little bit of traveling. And then I just, you know, I don't know. It was like I wasn't as excited anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, oh, shit, like I made $100,000 in a month. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the man now. Like, that was kind of the, the mindset. And, um, you know, it took me a while to really get another goal. And I think it's like, you know, the, the rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson, he had a speech he gave to the Lakers and in that speech talks about like putting his back against a wall and like constantly like being back against a wall. And I I think like, I didn't really understand when he said that, but like what he's trying to say is like when your back's against a wall, you have no other option other than moving forward. Yeah. And um, the problem is when you get successful, you got three hundred million dollars in the bank, or you know I don't know how much he has, but you know what I mean. You got a lot of money in the bank. It's like you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Like, you can just fucking hang out. But that's not the way he looks at it. He's like, no, I'm always like this is this could be it. Like always on that mind frame. And that's why I'm gonna be mad. Like you know on my little scale compared to him, it's like yeah, we make a hundred thousand dollars in a month, and next thing you know, I'm like oh, I'm the richest person that I know, um, in my age range. You yeah. Know? And um, fuck everybody else. I can do whatever I want. Which is true in some instances, but at the same time, you still gotta have discipline. You still gotta have your back against a wall. You still gotta be thinking like, no, I, I could do more. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. And you can't get complacent. The moment you get complacent is the moment you die. So, yeah. Interesting. But yeah, man. I don't mean here. I don't mean to lecture you though. No, you're not. Yeah, I don't. I don't think this is lecture at all. No. Yeah. I just think it's. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I will say this though, man. You know what's crazy about alcohol, is. I feel like 95% of America, they're like low-key alcoholics. That's true. That I, I would I would highly uh, fucking agree with that. How, how many how many girls have you dated? I don't know. This happened, I swear to God, like half the fucking girls I've ever dated that I've met their parents. Like, their fucking, their parents are like, every night they got to have a beer or a wine and they got like to like to, to go to sleep. Like that level. Like every single night. Yeah, like, like Pops has got to crack open a couple of beers every night, yeah. consistently. Um, on it. I've only dated um, two girls. The long term, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, and I, just for their own, you know. Uh, well, I would say girls and then girls because usually you meet the parents more often. But yeah. you, you have very close friends, too. Do you have any parents? Yeah, like, like to keeping the girls aside is just for their own privacy, whatever. Yeah, yeah, um, sure, sure, sure. Uh, as far as just people I know and parents, so fucking many. Yeah, you ridiculous. know what I mean? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, like there's plenty of like people I know who like every time I see them like if I'm at their house or whatever like you know they're sitting on the couch watching Sports Center and have a glass of wine. That's crazy. And like if that's, uh, I I definitely will never be at that point because I always feel um, after I drink alcohol I always kind of feel guilty and like shitty. But then the next time I'm like I still continue to do it so obviously I don't mind it that much. But as far as casually drinking I've only ever done that one time. What do you mean? Um, like just been by. It, as far as drinking by myself, mm-hmm. I've only ever done that one time. Okay. And you know what it was? It was when I was uh, like finishing the webinar and I was like in that grind mode and it was like 3 a.m. and I was thirsty but I didn't feel like water. And I just drank two beers and just like, it was honestly a nice little like treat for me. But um, the next morning I woke up and went back to my office and there's like two beers in my office. I'm like, why the fuck did I do need to do that? <laughs> I remember I came over, brother. There's two. Guys. Yeah, like, yeah. What the fuck yeah. is going on in here? No, but that was the only time I've ever drank alone. And it was only two beers, and it was like something I've been working on like all day long. You know, I was doing something that most people wouldn't be doing. Three a.m. working on. No, I, I totally understand. You know, I don't think it's bad to reward yourself. I just think it's crazy, like literally, how people they can't function unless they drink yeah. a wine. Which is alcohol. Yeah. People I mean, just don't realize it because they don't get hammered every day. But if they need yeah. a bit of buzz and fall asleep, that's not good. Yeah, that's not fucking good, you know. Um, it's just crazy. And I think it's weird for me because my parents never really drank, you know? 
my mom, I've literally only seen my mom drink like two or three times in my, in my entire life. That's crazy. You know, like, um, I remember one time too when I was really young, we were having a Christmas party at Colton's house. And uh, I was probably like nine or 10. And my mom went over there and drank. And the next day I had like the worst hangover, throwing up the whole nine, you know, because she never drinks. Yeah. And um, I remember her talking like, oh, never let me drink again, like da da da. And like, I think I saw that at so young, and then I never saw them drink. The only time I did was like this negative shit happens. I was like, just tied it to like never do that. Like, yeah, I know. That's that's you know? honestly good. So, but see, at the same time though, at the same time, you could say that at the same time you flip it around, and my dad until maybe five six years ago, he smoked cigarettes, mm -hmm. right? And so he, he quit cigarettes. Yeah, he quit. He, he's vapes now. He does vape. Okay, bad, which is better. But yeah. Not great. But anyway, he would smoke. And he'd, you know, probably two, three cigarettes a day for years. And I see him as a kid. And even though I saw my dad do it, someone I looked up to, and I still look up to, I never want to do it either. Yeah. So it's almost like I saw my mom, who never drank, drank once, made me not want to do it. And then I saw my dad do something every day that made me not want to do it. So maybe it's just me. I don't yeah, I know. No, that, that's where it's – that's interesting. Um, I, mean, I think the drinking thing uh, – more people drink than smoke, I feel like, at our age. No, nowadays, yeah. Yeah. So vaping, though, va vaping's a big thing. Vaping's very, very, uh, very common. Vaping is very common. <laughs> um, we've had a fair share of conversations about that, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's just you, to be honest. I think you just are crazy disciplined. Um, you realize both are not good for you, right? And you just don't do it because it just distracts you from your goal. Yeah, I do. I, 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 I mean, it's definitely partly me, but I don't know. Who knows, man? We're all, we're all different. We're all, we all have our nuances. Yeah. You know? So, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, though, it's like, you know, like you said, like, you know, if it's fulfilling, you had a good time last night, it sounds like, that's good. Definitely a memory, like, you know, I'll, I'll remember forever. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then it took me off my game today. Right. Which, if that's okay, that's okay. But it's, like, not okay. So there's a balance. There's, I think there's, I think there, with everything, there's a balance, just this fucking sweet spot, mm -hmm. where... You can uh, accomplish the science of achievement, and then also accomplish the art of fulfillment. <laughs> Just stole a Tony Robbins quote right there. I love that man. Um, yeah, I think so too. You know, but I think what it, what makes someone fulfilled is different for everybody. That's why it's called the art of fulfillment. Yeah. You know? And it's like, for me, like a lot of my like ninety percent of my fulfillment comes from my work. Yeah, in the that, first that, that's the, the science of achievement. Right. Which kind of cool. Which is, it is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but then, I mean, then there's the other ten percent, and that's divided up in a whole bunch of different categories, like coaching. Yeah. Like I don't coach to make money. Okay? Like, I'm not to flex. You know, no, I'm not going to say anything. But <laughs> let's just put this way: I don't coach to make money. Yeah, okay? not to flex. I'm probably going to spend more money like donating to them than I will make this year. Okay. Yeah. Just because like of the stuff we have planned and all that. Okay. But regardless, do they, do they pay you though? Or? They do very little. Like I, I get paid like maybe a fifteen hundred a season. Okay. Like Eighteen hundred a season. Um, do, you, do you take it? I, mean, I do, but then I donate back, so I really end up with just nothing. Basically. You're, you're just doing it for fun. Uh, basically, for fun. Yeah. yeah, basically. Um, yeah, I told you this year. You know, we're thinking about doing some of the warm ups. Hopefully, that happens. That'll be that'll be that'll be exciting. Holy shit! What? I fucking had a dream about that last night. Really? Yes. Man. Oh my god! Because you know how you have the you have your logo and shit on the warm ups. Yeah. Um, I had this weird dream that like your logo was on like um. Well, I don't know what NBA team it was, but it was like on a bunch of NBA players. Oh, Jersey. really? Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, my God, dude. That's so trippy. That's crazy, man. It just came back to me right when you said that. Yeah, man. It's destined to happen, man. If you, if you had a dream about it, it means it's going to happen. But then, like, no, but then it was on the big screen stuff, too. It was like Surplus Warrior. Oh, shit. <laughs> it was like all these advertisements. Maybe it's because I was at a baseball game yeah. last night. And I was thinking about like, you know, I was looking at the big screen, I was, I was like studying the advertisements on the big screen. It's like the halftime advertisements, me in my office with the fucking, there's one reason why you're not rich. <laughs> but, um, um, that's, that's fucking But yeah, no, so the warm ups, and that'll probably be like a thousand or two thousand to donate, and then um, I'll probably donate a little bit of money like I usually do. Um, I started doing last last Christmas, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so that's exciting. But yeah, it's just for fun, but it's, it's about fulfillment for me. Like, yeah. I really love seeing, you know, I love seeing those kids progress. And again, like I told you, I just, I, I don't know if I've told you this, but I, I just wish someone would have done, because you know, we talk about like life lessons mm -hmm. and like I have them like, it's more than just basketball. Yeah. You know, I really try to teach them some shit that I think will help them. Uh, I just really wish someone when I was that age would have done that shit for me. Like my fucking coach, it's kind of a dick to me to be honest with you. Um, You're a freshman coach. Just, yeah, a lot of my coaches were, let's put it that way. I definitely, um, I definitely uh, agree. And I think the reason why you're able to, focus so hard on uh, 
you know, like, te- like teaching these kids good lessons and like life lessons and you yeah, know yeah. being just like better humans. Um, and this is, might be a hot take, but I think that there's some people who coach high school basketball or high school whatever just to actually make money. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't have much else to do and they're doing it. And they're probably not the happiest people. But since you're fucking raking in whatever it is a month, right? Mm-hmm. And you're doing that for you know purely uh, your fulfillment. You're mm-hmm. able to actually go in there and, and do it to the best of your ability. You know what I mean? Instead of it's not a job for you. It's fun. To other people, it might be a job. 100%. So to your dick of a freshman coach, mm-hmm. it's probably a little bit of a job, right? But to you, you're doing it, and you're gonna do the best you can possibly do it because it's for fulfillment. Yeah, and I, I think there's so much truth to that because I think with um, like it goes back to even business. Like mm-hmm. I think your intentions really matter. Yeah. So like people that start a business to make money, it almost never works out. Mm-hmm. But when you start a business to help somebody, to help a customer solve their problem. That's a pure intention. That's why Jeff Bezos is a billionaire, yeah. right? Because his idea was like, yeah, I'm gonna make money. Of course I wanna make money doing this. Yeah. I wouldn't do it, but other than that, what am I actually doing this for? Well, I wanna help customers. You know, For him, it was just books. I wanna help them have access to the largest bookstore in the world, right? That's a pure intention. For me, with coaching, it's, it's a pure intention. Like, I just wanna help, you know? And I, I wanna do whatever I can do. Learning, you know, and I'm, I'm young. Like, I don't know everything. In fact, most things I don't know. Um, but, you know, the little bit I know, like, I, I just wish someone would have taken the time to do that for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not Spe- as speaking of pure intentions, and yeah, what's that? sorry to cut you off. Because no, um, originally I did the, the whole cloud stuff just to make money, right? Yeah, right. Um, and it was kind of just like stupid, but after like Rezul, Gabe, Layton, a few of the guys who came through the program made a lot of money. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, dude, this is fun helping people. You know what I mean? They, you really feel fulfilled, right? Mm-hmm. Like, especially Rezul, dude. Um, dude's bawling now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, like you know, just to be to be honest, it wasn't for me. Like I mean, maybe he could have found that a different way. Yeah. But f- because of me, like he's there now. I'm like, oh, that's sick. A hundred percent. And then the the whole the program you and I are you know thinking about going in on each other like in the future. Mm-hmm. That will be something I probably like put my blood, sweat, and tears in. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I I think you know it's crazy. Like I remember the first time we got an email saying that someone had gotten a deal. It was Maria. And literally, we hadn't even got a sale on the webinar yet. She was like a beta test member. Okay. And um, she emailed us, and she was having some problems early on, but then she emailed us, boom, was like, hey, I'll never forget this, man. I was at the weight room lifting, and then I, as I walked out of the weight room, I checked my email, and I was like, I got a yes, like for 20000 I'm gonna make this money, like da, da, da. And I remember that was the only time in my life that I can remember that I felt as excited, if not more excited, than the first time I got sales on the webinar. Which really? was like two months later, yeah. I was so fucking Because you're like, this shit works. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, this works. This woman that I've never met before in my life just went out and got a deal. And through, my program, through my program. Without meeting me. Yeah. Without meeting me. It's going to make $20,000. Like That's sick. That, that's how I felt there. when Rizal, he was like begging to call me. And I remember I was in my dorm and I was like, dude, like I'm, I'm busy right now. And he's like, dude, I'm trying to give you a fucking testimonial. I'm like, I will call you in five minutes. And then I got on, the, <laughs> and then I got on there and he was like, um, the whole time, like it was like a 30 minute long thing, but I've condensed it to like seven. But um, the whole time, I was just thinking in my head, like, this is gold. This is gold. You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. then there's that part where he's, like, um, he's like talks about how, like, the people were begging to pay him. And Rizzo was like, oh, no, like, you know, like, let's get you on a plan. The guy's like, how much? And then, like, the way he was doing it, he's like, no, they asked how much. And I'm like, and oh, my God. I was like. I love it so much. I was so stoked. That's so funny. That's funny, man. Because that video alone is going to make me way more money than, like. Oh, 100%. Like, from some fucking sale of, like. Of course, you know what I mean? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like something that I'm really have been excited about lately, you talk about like fulfillment, is like this fucking two comma club award, dude. Oh my god, dude. Like that means the Where's it gonna go? Right I there. I think it's gonna go right there, yeah. That's right, so right, sick. right in the background. Boom. Right there. Right. Right there. Boom. So when are you when are you gonna get that though? Uh, we're on pace to do the last couple months. To, to, to you know be able to apply for it and then you got it and it takes a while for them to send it and all that but but yeah and then we'll go in uh, I think the next Funnel Hacking Live is in February or March of next year and we'll, we'll get to fly to Nashville and so, so and by then you'll have it by, I mean we should have it shipped in by before then but then you get to go to Nashville and you get to go on stage and get your picture taken with the rest oh, of it all that's so sick that's yeah. so fucking sick like I literally like it's crazy to think about I remember when I first met Russell and we had done three cells at that time there's a picture on my Instagram actually I'll pull it up it's um, the picture I met Russell, and there's a picture you slide over, and it's like I had a, a counter mm-hmm. for how many how many photos, or not photo, how many um, sales I had to get before um, of a two comma club winner, and you can't see it because it's in red, of course, but it says right there nine nine seven. We had done three sales, so out of a thousand, because a thousand dollars each, yeah, nine hundred ninety seven more sales, and you can see like this is I just met Russell, and um, 
Yeah, man, I just remember that. Now it's like, like we're fucking, we're very close. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. How, if you don't mind me asking, how many sales away are you? I, I don't know the actual number. Okay. I know, I, we're, we're like maybe a couple hundred, but I mean, with, with our pace, we're going to be there. Yeah. Soon. So it's That's crazy. sick. No. And I'm really hoping what we can do is we can scale like 300, 400 a month and get like two by the time we get there. Two? Two, two, two comic books. Okay. Because it's, you know, every million you get, you get a new one. Oh, no way. Yeah. And then do you get the... Um, People have like 20 of them. That's fucking crazy. That's that's, uh, that's insane. Yeah. What I was going to say, do you get the um, the fucking... Uh, it's the two comma, like... Two comma comma X. Yeah, X. When that's you get ten. ten. Okay. You get 10 of those, you get you get a fucking ring. Oh, so if you... If you I've get, had dreams about that fucking ring, dude. So if you get 100, if you make 100 million, you get a ring. You make 10 mil. Oh. You make 10 million, you get 10 of the two, to- two comic club awards. Okay, then you get a ring. And you get a ring, and you get this giant fucking black. And then if you, when you do it again, you get another ring? Yeah. No, I don't think anyone's done it twice yet, though. No one's made 20 million with click photos? Not that I, I don't know. Pro- probably, but I don't know. Interesting. I don't know. Well, they just came out with the two comic club X, not this past Funnel Hockey Live, but the one before. Okay. And at that time, 17 people had won it. Well, it's still, a, you know, a relatively new company, ClickFunnels. It's only been around for like four or five years. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure in the next few years people have a couple of... Because could you imagine having like five rings? That's <laughs> crazy, bro. That's what I'm, that's it's what like I'm some to Tom Brady to. shit. Dude, that's, I'm trying to be like in three years from now, I'm trying to have like six, seven rings and be like, I'm the GOAT, like, yeah. like MJ. Like, yeah. And then just fucking delete my Instagram. That's what I'm trying to do. Or like uh, <laughs> Drake's lyric, um, which we were playing in a sport where we were getting rings. I wouldn't have enough <laughs> room on anything. And, and, wouldn't have any room for anything. For anything. Yeah. That that'd be nuts. That would be nuts, dude. But oh, yeah, I just want my sad. I want my first two comic club award right there. I'm going to Nashville to get it. If you guys are in Nashville, funny hacking, funnel hacking live, come say what's up. Um, but yeah, that means that means so much to me, man. I thought about it like when I get that award, like what am I gonna do, man? I think I might. I don't know. See, I don't know. What do you say? I don't know. Lambo? No, 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 no. Definitely not Lambo. Lambo is like a like a five mil. Yeah. Like, like a then, five. What the fuck are you gonna say? I don't know, man. It's, I, I've thought about either getting the C sixty three for when I get the when I get the, the two comic club, or getting a, a, the Rolex I've always wanted. Okay. I'm not sure which one yet. It kind of depends on where you're at because you're gonna buy a Rolex. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, we'll have to see. But it's how, how much is the Rolex? Uh, there's two different ones. The one I always had on my vision board is about thirteen thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there's a nicer one. Because the one I always had on my vision board is a sub a Submariner. It's a blue face. And then it's got a, it's half gold, half um, like white gold or steel basically. And then that's 13,000. And there's one that's the exact same thing, but it's all gold, it's 36. Shit. Yeah. If you make a mill, you can drop 30. That sounds a little crazy, huh? That's nuts. Anyway. I will say though, speaking of that, um, that two comma club thing for you. Yeah. Just every day when you walk in, you see it, that's just going to give you another level of fucking... Dude, I know. Joy, you know what I mean? I'm so fucking pumped. You have an idea, bro. Like, I'm so... Because who do we know that's won a two comic club board? Like, no. I don't know anybody. And the thing is, for fucking advertisements, when that's in the back, people know you're legit. I know. You know what I mean? Dude, when you, when you got a mill in the back... It's like an industry flex. Like, the other day when you're like, oh, yeah, we have about 20,000 people on our email list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I swiped up. I'm like, you fucker. <laughs> I know. Oh, like, that's a flex. And you're like, only certain people would know that's a flex. Only certain people would know. Yeah. That's, that's right. But yeah, you, you, you got the million in the back, you know? And I can be like, fuck my competition, you know? We're supposed to get like five of them. You know, Dan Henry has a video on Instagram where he's just, cause he, he, I think he just won the 10, the 10, the, the 10 million one. No way. So he's just scrolling through like all the, all the ones he's won. Like it's just, he has a whole fucking wall just going up a fucking That's plaque. Insane. It's crazy. I don't know if Dan Henry was that gnarly. He is fucking crazy, man. Does Becker, uh... Becker won a, a with HCOM, he won a, a 10, a 10 million. Okay, so he's got a ring. He's got a ring. Okay. Dude, here's, here's how crazy Becker is, okay? You know what I would do if I won that award, dude? I would fly down the day of the event because you get to go on stage. It's like a big deal. When you win that one, yeah. Because a bunch of people won the two comic club. I mean, a couple hundred people won the yeah, two comic yeah. club award, but like ten million is pretty rare. Ten million is like thirty people have won yeah. out of like eighty thousand. Okay, yeah. like it's a fucking big deal. He didn't even fucking go, dude. He didn't even go. He just had a mail of the award in the ring, and he and then like a month and a half after they got it, they posted a picture, and it wasn't even of him holding it. It was just the fucking award like next to the box. It's like, thanks, Russell. I was like, dude, what the fuck? That's pretty funny. Like, but that's so Becker. You know what I mean? Like, he's not going anywhere. That dude's a beast. He doesn't, he doesn't give a fuck about no guy. Have you met anymore. Sam Evans? No, I've never met Sam Evans. I really want to meet Sam Evans. I thought about, I, I'm still thinking about joining his master. How much is it? It's 30K. A month? Up front. Up front? Yeah, one, one time, 30K for, for a year. Yeah. Or it's 3,000 a month for a 12 month period. 
I think if I ever got to a level um, that I wanted to get to, mm-hmm. 30K with the same ovens, it would be like a fucking easy investment. 100%. I, I, I mean, you're already in a mastermind, and like, I'm not. That's, yeah. that's the where I haven't done it. Yeah. Because exactly. I'm like, do I really need to? Yeah. You know, because honestly, I talked to Becker about it, and Becker loves, and this is not him, by, by the way. Nothing, mm-hmm. He said nothing negative about Sam Evans. But he's like, Spencer, he's like, in that mastermind, you got to understand that there's a lot of people that are on a lower level than even you are. And he's like, I don't mean that in a negative way, but he's like, I was there because I, wa- I was making 10 million a year, and he's making 20, and I want to figure out how I can make 40. Yeah. A lot of people there that are kind of on your level are making 30000 a month or 10000 20000 a month. And um, you're trying to make a million a month. It's like, so a lot of the questions that they do there are like really... Shit you know. It's a lot of shit that you know. And it's like, oh, like how to sleep well. It's like we talk about that already. Like, But, you know, I would like to join um, just because I, I love Sam Evans. He's a cool guy. You know? Sorry to interrupt you again. Yeah, Speaking of sleeping well, do you still have those smart lights that wake you up? I do. I do. And you, every every day they go off. I haven't been using them now, but I do have them. How much? How many does it cost you? Well, I don't have the actual light. So what I do is. Is it like um, a bulb? There, there's different ones. So okay. the way that my, like sleeping bedroom is, is set. I don't know. I forgot the name of that bedroom is set up. <laughs> it's, uh, I know. I was like, what? The uh, the lights in my room mm-hmm. are um, they're hung on the ceiling, and then just the way it's wired, it's like it's literally just like you can see the cord. It's kind of ghetto. Okay. It's like the cord, and then it plugs into the wall. Okay, I, I have like Christmas lights in my room, like that too, just for fun. But do you have like your main lighting? That's just through the wall, right? Um, ma- my main lighting is just yeah. So you just flick a switch. Yes. So it doesn't plug in anything. No. Okay. So mine, you flick a switch too, but it has to plug into the wall. Got you. Okay. So for what I did, it's really easy. It's like sixty bucks. I just bought this little smart plug. You just plug it into that, and then plug that into the wall, and then you can use it on your phone. Like literally, right now, I could go on here and I could turn it on or off, set an alarm time. All yeah. That. What you would need to do is how many bulbs do you have in your room? I have four. So you need to buy four smart bulbs. Maybe not four. You might only need two. They're pretty yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's but um, you'd have to take out the other two because you got to keep the light on. But um, then you just program it to, to wake you up. They're kind of expensive. The smart bulbs are kind of expensive. They're like 80 bucks a bulb, I think. Doable. Okay. Fucking done. done. done, done. I thought you were going to say some stupid number, like 500. No, I don't think that In the much. aura ring, remember? Um, yeah, I'm almost at my... I, I think I told you when I would have rewarded myself with an aura ring. Yeah, you did. I'm close. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. You going to buy the diamond one? <laughs> no. No. Do you think I should keep the pinky ring on? Um, no, I'll take it off of the yeah, ring. Take that off. Well, what finger are you gonna wear your arm ring on? Do you know? Pinky? No, pinkies. You can't. They highly recommend you don't do the pinky. I'd probably do the uh, index. Yeah, that's what I do. Index is cool. Yeah, like fifty bucks. Oh, dude, that's. I feel like even one of them would fucking get the job done. Yeah, you probably probably right. But I'd get to. And then next year, my roommate Brandon Shody, if you're listening to this, you're gonna have to deal with it, bro. Next year in college, I'm gonna fucking bring the smart bulb and just. I love it. I love it, man. I uh, mean, <laughs> so, so sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Hey, good. Brandon, you seem like a cool guy. I know nothing about you. Have fun getting up early, my friend. <laughs> Have fun getting up early, man. Because that's the biggest thing, dude. I'm sitting there and it's dark and I'm comfortable and I'm like, dude, like the alarm's going off. But when it's when I just turn the fucking light on, oh, dude, it's I'm awake. Night. Yeah, you are awake. I'm fucking it's awake. It's crazy how that works. Night and day, just boom, you get up. The first time I ever did, I remember, I used to struggle so hard getting up at five yeah. every single morning. It's mm. tough, man. It's yeah. fucking hard. Um, I remember the first time I did it, dude, just fucking, I was like jumped out of bed, bro. I was like ready to go. Yeah, let's go like, fucking murder this day. Let's go murder the fucking day. Um, That's sick. You know, I'm going to, I'm probably going to, I might go get them tonight. That's a good idea. Yeah. And, and you, should, you should get that book, too. Yeah. Psych, psych. <laughs> just kidding. I ordered it on Amazon today. Fuck. Psycho Cybernetics, man. You must have. But yeah, no, it's definitely, it definitely helps a lot. Definitely helps a lot. Uh, another thing I did is because I've always slept my entire life with fan, like a fan on. Yeah. Just because of the noise, I don't know. And so what I did was I set it to where at the exact same time the lights come on, the fan turns off. Dude, it's like fucking, you're awake, bro. How the fuck did you, uh, I don't know if I'd be able to do that with mine. Just, just smart plug. Just a smart plug. Yeah, but my fan's connected just to like the ceiling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can do that. So like the ceiling fan? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to do that, man. But if you got a regular fan, you could. That's true. Just turn that shit off. Boom. Up. S- ceiling fans are gnarly, though. I love it. It is. Yeah. I actually, when I was a kid, I had a very scary situation. I th- it would, but didn't it, like, used to f- almost fall or some Dude, shit? So, so when I first moved out from, from our street, mm-hmm. we're in the new Ladera house, and I'm laying in bed. I wake up in the middle of the night, it's probably like 2 a.m., 
and I heard, and I got the ceiling fan on full blast, and he's like, like loud, like loud, right? And I'm like, what the fuck is that, <laughs> right? So the whole night goes by, I can't go back to sleep, because it's like, and like, I'm like, oh my God, that's loud, too, right? I'm like, fuck. So the next night, whatever, I go to bed, wake up in the morning again. Now I'm like, dude, there's something going on. Like, yeah. What the fuck is going on? So I go on my phone, and I remember there was like, um, I was looking around, like, no, I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And then I was like, maybe it's like a bug or something. Like, I don't know. And I started like freaking out. Maybe it's like 2 a.m. You start thinking weird shit. And like, you could like search the noise, and like, it came up with like this type of bug. And I was like, oh, fuck, like, we got an infestation, you yeah, know? Yeah. And as I'm going through this, all of a sudden, just, <laughs> just fucking falls out of the ceiling and just hangs right there by like the cord, you know? And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like 3 a.m. Of course, like, I start yelling, like, oh, my God, like, freaking out. Yeah. My dad comes running, and he just sees a ceiling fan, like, hanging out of the fucking ceiling. He's like, what the hell? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. I should just fell out of the ceiling. He starts looking. He's like, these fucking dumbasses glued it into the ceiling. Oh, bro. that's so funny. I was like, dude. And what that, like, clicking was, it was, like, the glue separating from the wall. <laughs> I was like, dude. Oh, speaking of this, I'm sorry, again, every time you good. say something, it, like, reminds me of something. You're all good. I'm going to try sleeping in my hammock tonight. No, I already talked about this. Yeah, so I'm going to drill it, you know, drill a little screw with, like, a screw, right, that has, like, a little um, thing that you can connect something on, yeah. both sides of the wall, yeah, yeah. and then just hammock, and if I'm close to the lights, and then, and, you know, I'm hammocking up above, and then, like, I wake up and the light's right there, dude, I'm fucking, I'm ready for the day. Bro, you're so in the hammocks, like, it's, it's too much. That's too much for me. So sick. He tried to convince me to put a hammock in his. He's like, yo, bro, fuck this. I have a bean bag over here. He's like, fuck this bean bag. You need a hammock. I'm like, dude, where am I going to put He's like, just hang up on the wall. I'm like, I don't need a hammock in the background of my fucking videos. But you're not, it wouldn't be, you have to understand, it wouldn't be in the background of your videos. It'd be a screw, another screw, and then you fucking attach it whenever you want to hit sit in the hammock. I, a, I think it would be 30x more comfortable than that bean bag. Well, I like the beanbag. Beanbag's sick as fuck. Yeah, I, I like the beanbag. I've spent I spent a little bit of money on the beanbag. It's a couple hundred bucks, you know. Hammock's like thirty dollars. Well, that's what I'm saying. I want to get my use out of the beanbag before I upgrade to the hammock. Would that be an upgrade? I don't, I don't know. For you, it'd be an upgrade. Apparently, I don't, I, I gotta try them out. I've slept in a hammock before when we went camping or something like that. But I've you know I, a hammock was comfortable. I will say that. I have never slept in a hammock and been like, damn, I wish that that was my bed. That's, that's never been the conversation that I've had. I know, I know. Yeah. I just want to try it out. No, for sure try it out. But I'm just saying, I've never been like, fuck, like laying in bed, I've been like, fuck, I wish this was a hand. Like, like I've never said that. To I've me. never been like that either. I will say, though, because um, when I sleep sometimes, I wake up and my, my arms all fucked up because they sleep weird. Yeah, but within a hammock, you're just like, you're just it, it, it adjusts to you, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah, that's, it's that's not a bad point. point. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, fuck, man. I don't know. This this went way out of left field. Yeah, we went, we went. I forgot we were even fucking talking still on yeah. the podcast. We are, man. Should we sh should we wrap it up? Let's wrap this Let's one wrap up. It Next up. week we'll have a we'll have a topic. We'll have a better topic. Uh, we need we'll do the webinar part two eventually. Yeah. Uh, we're mm -hmm. waiting. We we've gone through. We've built his whole funnel. He's built the whole webinar. Really trying to launch these Google ads and they're fucking. They're just not accepting the money. Being, they're being pansies over there. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. So. Um, Google, if you're watching this, which you're not, but if you are. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> fuck you, Google. I don't Google. know if should say that. I spent a lot of money on Google, but uh, <coughs> you need to accept our money, or his money. Um, and yeah, and anything else you want? No. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you didn't enjoy, go fuck yourself. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, have a good one, guys. Take care.